Creeps and cretins, welcome back to the Madhouse. I'm Master Seth. With me, as always, is Mr. Standalite. Uh, we have a lot of fun planned for you tonight. Yes, we do. Let's venture into the castle of Dr. Freudstein and the house by the cemetery. Coming up next on Movies from the Madhouse. to a widow who finds out her husband butchered his mistress and then took his own life. That's where Peterson hanged himself on that iron rail. Ah! However, I told you very clearly. I tried, but my mother wouldn't listen. She said Daddy had to do some research. He shouldn't have come, Bob. He shouldn't have. <laughs> Project on suicide with a researcher commits suicide. Don't go inside, whoever you are. Don't go inside. Someone's in here, mommy. <laughs> There's someone down there. Get the door open. Where's the axe? Where's the axe? <laughs> Mom, keep away from the door. No, I will. <laughs> Don't worry, Bobby. I'll get you out. Why? Who's there? Who's in this house? Dr. Freudstein! Ah! 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 No, Bob. You should have listened to what I said.
about this. I'm way into I'm it. Really I love excited. I love Lucio Fulci. Uh, I love Lucio Fulci. Um, House by the Cemetery is not my favorite of his films, but it's by leaps and bounds not my not favorite of his films. Uh, Lucio Fulci, uh, he's made everything. He's made westerns. He's made comedies. Uh, he uh, has made psychological thrillers. He made slasher movies. But he will always be known for this quartet of gore epics he made in the late 70s and early 80s. And that, of course, is The Beyond, Zombie, House by the Cemetery, and uh, City of the Living Dead, also known as The Gates of Hell. Um, who is it? Grimsdale! Grimsdale! His name is Grimsbane. Grimsbane, we're filming. Could you please get the door? Go on, honey. Wait, let's see who it is. Why, it's the it's nightmare. It's the nightmare! Come on in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have uh, a seat, nightmare. We're just about we're just about to watch House by the Cemetery. Yes, you've made it just in time. Ah, awesome. You mind if I pull up the seat? No. Not at all. Have a seat. Please have a seat. Join us. Ladies and gentlemen, the nightmare. Ah. You came right in time, in the yes. nick of time. We are going to watch a Lucio Fulci classic. Are you familiar with Lucio Fulci? Yes, yes I am. Are you familiar with the house by the cemetery? Yes, I used to live there. <laughs> Excellent. 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 Well done. Then perhaps you're Bob, and we'll get into Bob before <laughs> yes. too long. Well, I guess we'll just have to see by the end of the night. Indeed. Let's see if you could Bob out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. House by the Cemetery on Movies from the Madhouse. Without further ado, 1981 or some shit. Italian classic gore cult horror shit. Oh, you're in for it. Yep. It's the good stuff. Yes. House by the Cemetery. And go. Are you dressed? Hey, come on, it's late. I gotta get home. I don't want to be put on restriction again. Steve! Steve? Are you there? Listen, if you're trying to scare me, I don't think it's very funny. This place is crazy. Steve, I warn you, I'll never come here with you again. Steve, come on, where are you? Hey, if you don't quit it, I swear I'm gonna split without you. Steve! Stephen, where are you? Please answer me. Steve!
Honey, you still have to pack away your ties. Now, which ones are you going to take with you? Bob, I'm talking to you. Bob! Bob, will you please wake up? When Daddy gets home, we get... Mommy! What's the matter? Mommy, why does that girl keep telling me I shouldn't go there? What girl, Bob? The one standing at the window in that house. At the window, huh? We don't have time to play games now, honey. Daddy will be home any minute. Now, where's the... Uh, I guess she had something to do. Let's just say you never saw her in the first place, right? Yes, I did. I saw her face. She was waving. I could read her mouth. And did she say anything to you? Yep, she said that I shouldn't go over there. Why did she say that, Mommy? Well, I don't know, Bobby. Maybe. Because she didn't want you to have to pack away your ties the way you were supposed to. <laughs> Come on, Lacey, let's get to dinner. I can't go now. It's important. I can't. I'm leaving tomorrow. Lucy still hasn't made up her mind. I have a lot of guts picking up the reins of someone else's research at its most critical point like this. Especially when that someone else was the scientist of Barry Peters and Scalibur. Well, I'll tell you, Boyle, you're the only man who can keep this project from going down the drain. I mean, apart from the 5,000 more he's going to be earning a year, if you were Peterson's protege, and also, I believe, one of his best friends. And I know you're itching to clear up his suicide. That's going to explain, but I know you'll get to the bottom of it. Well, I'll try. The important thing is, when this huge project gets published, it'll have just your name on it. Think what authorship can mean. Yeah. Publish or put up? <laughs> yeah. What do you think Eric would have done in Sheila like that? Well. I don't know. No idea. Apprehensions? Yeah. It's scary. He organized the project, got it underway. That he did. And then, for well, no, no reason, abandoned everything, slaughtered his mistress, and... And there he was, researching suicide. Uh, the times we have to live in. Taxi! Well, Boyle, when school is over, I'll drive up there and see you. No, it would be. I adore New England. I'll be looking forward to it, sir. Bye-bye. need to. All his reference material is right there in the library. Well, after all, he was a colleague of yours. Let's just say we worked in the same field. But darling, you could have at least gone to pay your condolences. 
What do you say to a widow whose husband had another woman and who one fine day slaughtered that other woman after which he hanged himself? After Mommy changed her mind for the tenth time, the place was already rented. My fault, huh? So where are we gonna live? In an even nicer place, thanks to Professor Mueller. Otherwise, you'd sleep in a tent. I wish. Welcome to New Whitby. Tired? <laughs> a little nervous. Come on, you're gonna love it. Smell that country air. Stay right where you are, Bob. We'll be back in a minute, okay? Will you get me some candy? After dinner, if you're a good boy. Oh, I'm so late. I'm sorry. The start of the season. Mr. and Mrs. Boyle? Yes, How do you do? Hi. I'm Laura Gittle. Nice to meet you. Okay, well, you can already start to fill this out and sign it. Sit down, please. I'm going to get the keys for you, okay? I don't know exactly where I put them, but I... Ah, yes. Anyway, you can move in as soon as you want. We haven't had much time to clean it up. I'm sure you two will find it very comfortable. Your predecessor was needed to pin. They did say it was the same house, didn't they? In any case, poor Dr. Peterson had been there such a short while. Uh, that's on one month's rent. Of course, you've been there before, haven't you, Dr. Boyle? No. Well, I should think they could take possession. Get the keys, Harold, would you please? Uh, what keys? Ah. The Freudstein keys. Oak Mansion, Harold. Yeah, sure, okay, Oak Mansion. Yeah. Excuse me, John. I didn't mean to keep you waiting there. Well, how do you find that little village? It's not exactly New York, but I'm sure you'll grow to like it. I hope so. Behind you. On the other side of the street. Hello. Hello. My name is May. I've been expecting you. My name is Bob. My daddy's here to do some research. Yeah, I know. However, I thought I told you very clearly not to come. 
I did my best, only mommy wouldn't listen to me. Parents never listen. They always do what they want. You shouldn't have come, Bob. So now, you two just follow me. Okay. That's my car there. Where's... Hold on a second. Go. Mommy, <gasps> mommy! I saw the girl from the house. See the dog the she gave me to play with? Right? She wanted to talk. She lives here too, you know that? Stay there, not to move. But she called to me. What else? Ah, they promised to come by Friday at the latest. I guess that about does it. Thank you very much. Not at all. My pleasure. Well, I hope you enjoy your stay and your research, Mr. Boyle. Thank you. I hope so, too. And don't worry. As soon as I get back to town, I'll find you that babysitter. That's very kind of you. If there's anything else, you know where to find me. Okay. of Walden Pond. Norman? Yeah? This house is exactly like the one in the old photo, in New York. Yes, it's possible. It's a typical example of the local architecture. There are probably hundreds of houses like it in the area. You ready? Don't you want to unload the car? You got six months to contemplate nature. Bob and I should have stayed in New York. Oh, for God's sake, again? Stop with this, please. Yeah, after all, six months goes by real quick, doesn't it? Hey, come on, don't you remember? We decided it would be a vacation. I do my research, and you and Bob even go out. It's beautiful. Great place for a vacation, isn't it? <sighs> Listen, honey. It means another $5,000 per year. Do you realize? We can refurnish the apartment in New York. What's the matter? It's only a doll. Bob, that was bringing home that trash. Are you just tired? You really should take those pills Joe Baker prescribed. Why do you keep telling me to go on with those pills? I feel fine. I never felt better. Now calm down your nerves. My nerves are fine the way they are. Besides, I read somewhere that those pills can provoke hallucinations. Are you sure? Well, you can't say the house isn't quaint. I guess this must be the cellar. And Mrs. Giddleston had the door nailed shut. Quaint. <laughs> say the word and I'll open it for you. 
No. Go fix the rooms first. Tonight I'd rather sleep in a real bed. Wouldn't you? Are you Mrs. Boyle? Yes. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Gittleson sent me over. I'm Anne, the babysitter. Damn those tombstones. <laughs> tombstones. Damn them right down. <laughs> oh. I do too. I do too. Uh, I like House by the Cemetery. Uh, the, the good old Lucio Fulci classic. You know, I remember going to the video store when I was a kid and uh, I'd see uh, the box for Zombie. And it would just have that, that, that zombie face with the maggots crawling out of it. Yes. Out of its eye. And it would say, We are going to eat you. And I thought that was fucking fantastic. Great tagline. I thought that was great. And I used to see the House by the Cemetery box all all the time too. It it didn't have a tagline, as far as I can remember. It just had a picture of a house on a hill, and in the, that was in the background. And in the foreground, there was a hand coming out of the ground with a bloody knife. Yes. And that was this movie, House by the Cemetery, directed by Lucio Fulci, released in 1981. Uh. Part of his little gore uh, phase, you know. He did. He did. Like I said before, he did all kinds of shit. Uh, I I especially like the. Uh, I, well, I've never seen them, so I don't especially like them. But I I especially like the idea of watching a Fulci film that is like this sword and sandal slash sci-fi thing. You know. Oh yeah. Because he, he did those. He did those. <laughs> I'm excited about watching this. Well, I this is Bob. a fucking cool movie. I love the picture with the little girl, and how his mother doesn't like listen to anything. What the hell? Yeah. It's like there's there's okay. a little bit of shining in it. Look, I got this doll. Where did it come from? Where did she give it to me? I don't know. She doesn't even she ask to come with. about the doll. She's like, God. don't stray from the car, honey. God, sorry. It's a creepy, fucked up, broken ass doll. Too. It is. Uh. Bad parenting. Bad doesn't parenting. Even ask. She doesn't she listen. Didn't give a fuck. <laughs> Doesn't listen. Pardon my French. Yeah. But, yeah. Not one. But we allow everyone to speak all languages on this show. <laughs> That's right. Okay, good. That's right. We're no discrimination. All languages are welcome. Yes, nightmare. No discrimination. That's right. Like Slayer said, no segregation or separation, just me and my world of enemies. And then I believe they said, I'll never be one to blindly follow. I'll never be one to follow false disciples. Slayer. I don't know if those are the same song, but they're all, all those lyrics are available on the Slayer album, God Hates Us All, on Deaf American Records. And yet we stray. Yeah, and yet we stray. Those damn tombstones. Um, like so many Italian horror movies, House by the Cemetery doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah, well, you know, but, I mean, but it, there's a house by the cemetery. Well, there, there, I don't that? just mean the title. I mean, 
it, it's the movie itself. It doesn't mean things. It's a series of images. Um, this is not a bad thing. I love Italian horror films for this reason. I love that they're just a, that oftentimes, not all the time, oftentimes they're just a series of images. You know? This doesn't only go for Italian horror films, this goes for Italian film. You know? I mean, you're gonna look at Italian art films like the work of Fellini, you know, La Dolce Vita, Eight and a Half, all that shit, you know? Or you can look at any other Italian film. And you'll see, they're just series of images. Uh, Fulci embraced this. Um, I don't know a hell of a lot about the mental process of Lucio Fulci. Uh, what I do know is that I've seen these four essential Fulci films. I'm sorry to say, I've never seen Cat in the Brain. I, I need to see Cat in the Brain. I have not seen it. I have seen Demonia, and I didn't think it was that good. I have to say, I have seen some cats and some brains. But I haven't seen that movie. No. It's never came across my list. Brains and cats, but no cats. <laughs> Shall we get back to the movie? We should probably just get the fuck back to the movie. <laughs> this is getting silly. Alright. House by the Cemetery, movies from the Madhouse. Welcome back.
No, honey, it's all right. You keep the car. But you'll need it to get home. Really? It's okay. I can take a bus. But they only leave once an hour, and you'll have the groceries. I don't have much to get, and I feel like a walk. Who can argue? Okay, I'll keep Hi. the car. Who was it? Mrs. Gittleson. She didn't see me. Or she turned the other way on purpose. Or maybe you need glasses. <laughs> maybe. You on top of it? Yeah. I feel a little bit better now that I know that Anne's looking after Father. A candlelight dinner. Okay. In the last two months, not only did he come in less and less, but he acted differently. I had the impression he uh, was growing obsessively jealous of Sheila. Dr. Boyle, yeah? you will pardon my indiscretion. Please. Uh, what was he so eager to um, discuss with you back then? Back when? When you came to visit him with your daughter. Don't you remember? Uh, last October, I think it was. I never paid a visit to Dr. Peterson. In fact, this is the first time that I've set foot in this town. Are you sure? Yes, of course, positive. And then I have a son, not a daughter. Strange. I could have sworn. Hey, Mr. Wheatley, hey, you called me. Yeah. Ah, our precious Daniel Douglas. If you need any books, documents, reference material of any kind, feel free to call on our Mr. Douglas. Thank you. <clears throat> Everything's the way Dr. Peterson left it. Those are his notes. I didn't dare move any of his material. <laughs> are you going to carry on Dr. Peterson's research? Of course. <laughs> well, over here, uh, find all the medical reports. Uh, Death certificates and lists of missing persons. What did Peterson need that material for? <laughs> I don't know. He asked me to get it. I told him that uh, the uh, material wasn't pertinent. And? And uh, he answered uh, that he was doing a little private research. <laughs> Do you know anything about it? No. But knowing Peterson, I'm sure it's something fascinating. <clears throat> well, <laughs> if you need me, I'm in the next room. Thank you. <laughs> you know where uh, he hanged himself? There, from that railing. <laughs> Dr. Freudstein. Who's Dr. Freudstein? Oh, it's all a lie. What's all a lie? She's really not very dead. Oh, I know. She's not very dead. June 7, 1879, Dr. Jacob Allen Freudstein is hereby suspended from the Medical Association and banned from practicing the medical profession for life.
You. I'm home. Lucy. Lucy. How do you feel? Better. Have Bob and Ann come back? Not yet. Why can't we get something else from Mrs. Gittleson? I mean, this, this house is so strange. Sure, I can deal with a graveyard next door, but to live with a tomb in your hallway? It's just something you'll have to get used to. This ain't New York. I know. Most of the old houses in the area have tombs in them. Really? No kidding. It's because in the winter it freezes here. Is that so? Yeah, and the yard being like a rock, they'd bury Grandpa at home. No more ghost talk now, huh? Okay. Come on, I've got a surprise for you. What is it? I did some clever scrounging. And well, darling, now we try to solve the cellar door mystery. Show mommy there's um, nothing behind the door. How about giving me a hand? Sure. Now, this one didn't work. You try it. Did you see the girl he was talking about? Oh, yeah. I think I would. No. But weren't you with him? Yes, all the time. I found it. Only trouble is. Oh, thank you. Get out. Obviously, Peterson wasn't interested in sellers. Must be years since he... Steps going down. Should I come with you? No, stay with Bob.
you shout like that? Oh, I was just... cemetery. Here we are. Fucking Bob. Bob. <laughs> and May. Bob and May. His girlfriend. His girlfriend. His girlfriend. His mom still knows me. <laughs> no. Uh, the mom is played by uh, Katrine McCall, I believe is how it's said. Uh, she was also in The Beyond, uh, the Lucio Fulci masterpiece. Uh, greatest gore film. That's ever been made. Um, but yeah, House by the Cemetery is different from other uh, Fulci gore films. You know, it's, it's way more... Uh, well, for one thing, we haven't had a brutal eyeball gouging. Not yet. At we all. We have had a knife through the face. We did have a knife through the face. We did, early on. Through the back of the face. It's really all the gore that's happened so far. But it's still creepy. Mm -hmm. They're screaming and Where is this screaming coming from? Because it didn't seem to be coming from anyone until it was coming from his wife. I know. And it sounded like, I mean, he was sobbing. Or sobbing Bob. Sobbing Bob and the Creeping Knobs. Sobbing Bob and the Creeping Knobs is a great name for a band. <laughs> sobbing Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so well. Jeez, where'd you get that glass? Do you bring your own or what? Yeah, I never go anywhere with that. That's like three beers worth of mug there, buddy. Well, it's our beer. Well, you're welcome to it. It's fine. Thank you, Matt. Don't worry. You know how much a pound is? Uh, you know how much a pint is? A pint? A pint. No. A pint is 16 ounces. Do you know how much 16 ounces is? Tell me. A pound. There's two pints in that glass, I guarantee it. That's a lot. That means he owes me. Oh, nice Two man. pounds of He's flesh. Guest. Oh, yes. But we pounds do want two flesh. pounds of flesh, even though you are a guest. Well, uh, I'll check by the house by the cemetery and see if I can scrounge some of that up. Isn't that your old place of yeah. residence? Yeah. We should go there sometime. Yeah, Those damn tombstones. Like it. Screaming and sobbing Bob. Well, I'm going to fire up the crock pot. Uh, with, uh, the rest of y'all get back to house by the cemetery. Mm. Let's do that. I see. I'll tell Mrs. Gittleson. Um, please tell her we want to move out. No later than tomorrow. Yes, very well. Well, will it be be difficult to find another house? 
I can't really say, but I don't think so. Thank God for that. Don't forget now, no later than tomorrow, okay? Yes, very well. I'll call Mrs. Gittleson and have her stop over this evening. Goodbye. No. No. Mm -mm. It was inevitable. What? That they'd want to leave the Fraudstein property. Oh, Oak Mansion, Harold. How many times do I have to tell you that house is now called Oak Mansion? Yeah, give the bad product a new label. Well, call it what you will, but it's always been Freudstein's house. <sighs> May. We have to. I suppose so. What were you doing by the window? Watching the house is all. You can't see it from here. Come. Time to go to bed. Don't go inside. Not inside.
morning. What are you doing? I made coffee. Oh. What a shame you didn't come with us to the restaurant last night. At least your parents must have been glad you paid them a visit, huh? Do you live far from here? get a word out of her. Mm. Maybe she doesn't like me. Is it interesting? What? Did you find anything interesting? I don't know. Peterson was reading up about a certain Dr. Freudstein of the century surgeon who had a penchant for illegal experiments. And what did that have to do with his historical research? Nothing. Nothing at all. The best guess I can come up with is that Peterson was already going off the deep end. Honey. Yeah? That's why I have to take a trip to New York. Today? Yeah. I need Mueller's okay to follow up a hunch. Which is that Peterson's suicide was somehow connected with his research on the surgeon Freudstein. Surprised? Well, uh, it was Sunday, and uh, I thought... Uh, I know. What are you doing here? <clears throat> Nothing. Just a routine check. One of my duties is to check all the wings of the library uh, on Sunday, when we're closed. <clears throat> I won't disturb you any longer. Excuse me.
days and days since I stopped work for this. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't stop now, though. I've got to. I've lost all critical perspective. The signs, the warnings of this house, Freudstein's house, that anguish crying, and Sheila smiles. What can I do to make her believe me? Maybe I'm insane. Yes, this is all unreal. Freudstein's house draws me like an infernal magnet and frightens me. many have wandered innocently into the waiting spider web? How many more are doomed to follow? The smell of the rooms terrifies me and lures me on. The smell of blood. How many more still to come? Onward, into the depths of this mystery, I want to know. Know the worst. Onward. Find out. Find out. Freudstein. His voice. It's not his voice. Blood. Blood. Not only blood. His voice. I can hear it now. I hear it. I hear it everywhere.
playing. Bob? Are you down there? Bob? You all right? You want me to, you want me to come down and help you? Welcome to Divinations, Incantations, and Bewitchings with Mistress Dandelai. I welcome you tonight to the witchery. This evening, I'm going to consult my fortune cards, Madame Mandora's fortune cards. And we're going to see what the spirits of the dead have to say to us. What message will they give? Let's see. Ooh, it's an elemental. It's fire. Reckless actions lead to conflict. Hmm. Reckless actions lead to conflict. We must be careful, we mustn't be. Let's see what else. Let's pull one more card. The dragon, strength and wisdom. Strength and wisdom is what's going to keep you from making rash decisions and getting yourself in a load of trouble, unless that's exactly what you're after. Thank you so much for joining me tonight in The Witchery, and now we'll get back to the movie.
me. Father. Father. What's the matter? What are you doing there, darling? It was awful. It was awful. Where's Anne? What happened? I don't know. But, but I miss her. Were you playing? You mean she she was hiding? And you got scared of what? Your feet are for racing. And I heard this scream. And I went down to the top. And poor Anne. Anne? And they cut off Anne's head. What? It did, Mommy. It fell down the stairs and was lying there. And I saw it. I did. Bob? Bob, really? It's true, Mommy. Yes, yes, Star. It's all right. You really scared me, you know that? It's the truth, Mommy. Honest, I saw I roll down the stairs. Bob, there's nothing there. Believe me. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I happen to be the caretaker. We're closed now. I'm looking for a tomb. Whose tomb? A Dr. Freudstein's. Oh, you two. What do you mean? Well, you're not the first. <laughs> Look, friend. I came over 200 miles to see this tomb, and I want to see it. Well, you shouldn't have bothered. There's no Dr. Freudstein here. According to the official records, he was buried here. The official records don't mean a thing. It's a lot of bunk that Freud seems buried here. Just gossip. Now, come on, the cemetery's closed. Let's go. You mind? Mommy. Anne will come back. You'll see. She's probably just gone to visit her parents, that's all. <sighs> Go to sleep now. Come on. There we are. Late.
from the door. So we decided, considering the film's called House by the Cemetery and there's so very little bit of cemetery in the film, that it's a beautiful day in Eugene, Oregon, and we decided we'd come out to the old Masonic Cemetery and have ourselves a picnic. So we hope you enjoy this little segment. It's a beautiful cemetery. Been here for, uh, I think, a couple hundred years, isn't that right? Yes. All right, well, let's find our spot and chow on some food, and then we'll look at some gravestones and all that kind of shit. Here we have the grave of a murdered sheriff. On February 5th, 1903, Lane County Sheriff Withers was shot to death by someone named Elliot Lyons, who was an embezzler. He was also a horse thief and an escaped prisoner. And... He was shot to death, and after that, they were going to like lynch the guy that shot him. 
but he ended up going to um, trial and they found him guilty of murder in the first degree and he was sentenced to hang by the neck until dead, dead, dead. And this is the murdered sheriff, Mr. Withers. This is our beautiful Masonic Cemetery. It's always been my favorite cemetery in town. Just peaceful. It's not right there on the college campus like the Pioneer Cemetery. Which is also awesome. We'll it's great. It's, yeah, that's probably, I think that's the oldest cemetery in town, isn't it? I thought this one was. Oh, uh, maybe. We'll have to look that up. Yeah, I think this one's the oldest. This one has all of the founding fathers of this town. Like, larger behind us. Chambers. Family. <laughs> yep, it's gorgeous. I'm glad we, I'm glad it's such a beautiful day today for this, too. It was a lovely picnic. Yes, yes, it was. It was a very nice picnic here in the graveyard, in the cemetery, with all the dead folk. Dr. Freudstein is here. Dr. Freudstein? <gasps> oh, no. This new Lexi, born February 28, 1851. She's a February-born Pisces like me. These ones here are older than hell. I can't even make out what they say on them. They are pretty though. Yeah, that one's one of my favorites. I bet you if we did an etching, we could figure out what it says. We should come up and do etching. We probably should, I never thought of it. Next time. Yeah, that's beautiful. Big old bird bath. I know, it's so neat. It's all moss and crusted inside. Scry into it in the moonlight. Monuments, the Davis family. Let's see what else we can find. Oh, I love this. Did you find the Moore Seth bench? I did. I Ooh, found the Moore Seth that. bench. I wonder if another one of me is going to appear. You know, <laughs> more me. More, more Seth. More Seth. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of stuff. Oh, there's the boy with no name. We haven't seen him in weeks. There he goes, back into hiding. Lars J. Helseth, no relation. We're going to the mausoleum. Are you ready? It's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Park is closed. <laughs> we should get out of here before the spirits start yeah. to rise in the dark. Before that dead sheriff comes after us. <laughs> Trespass. Well, thank you all for coming out on our little cemetery picnic with us. Uh, it's been a beautiful day for it. Absolutely gorgeous here. And now back to House by the Cemetery on Movies from the Madhouse. Yes, enjoy. <laughs>
He needs human victims to renew his cells. That's how he stays alive.
Me? Time to go home and remember your manners. Now that Bob is safe, show him you can act like a Freudstein. You know some other guest is surely destined to drop in. No one will ever know whether children are monsters or monsters, monsters are, are children. What the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? That has For nothing to do with the goddamn film. This is like one of the little Corman Vincent Price movies where they just, they, like the Conqueror Worm, where they just called it the Conqueror Worm. Yeah. Didn't follow the story at all. Well, the Conqueror Worm wasn't even a goddamn story, it was a poem. Right. Right. And they changed it into the Witchfinder General movie. You know, that's what it was known as Which in England. Which is an amazing film. It's a great it's film. Incredible. We can't watch it here. MGM has that. Oh, God. But uh, that, I do too. I do too. Vincent well, Price is my big favorite. Best, best roles. Ever. It is. It really is. But we digress. We digress. Uh, there were no monster children in this film. No, just there was a ghost girl. Babies. But she was... She's Pretty so fucking nice benevolent. And lovely. I love May. I like so May. I, I like May. Uh, and Bob. Bob. What the hell was his name? Giovanna Frezza. Yeah. Giovanni. Uh, Giovanni Frezza. Mm -hmm. uh, child actor, Italian child actor. Um, his last appearance, I believe, was in Demons in 1984. Isn't that what you found? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Mistress Nandalai was looking up pictures of a uh, baby Bob and ended up finding a bunch of pictures of baby Brad Pitt. Well, because he's like baby Brad Pitt. I mean, he's cuter than baby Brad Pitt, but he might look like Brad Pitt's baby, actually. Maybe, except I now know. he's all grown up and he looks like that guy from the Young Turks. <laughs> I know. He's still awesome. I mean, seriously, um, this... I think it's fairly obvious that was not Bob's voice. I'm oh, not yeah. absolutely certain who I don't know, dubbed but Bob's voice. But, uh, Bob's Fairly voice. Child. Bob, I'm sorry, Bob, because of his voice, 
has kind of become like a in joke in the uh, hardcore horror community. I can know? imagine why. He's ridiculously it's, whiny. It really does stand out. Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! Yeah, no, he's. Uh, that dubbed voice is something else. It, it yeah. really is. It really is. That is, uh. Yeah, that is uh, Bob's voice. Bob's <laughs> voice. It's one of the most memorable things about the film. <laughs> Whether you like it or you don't like it, I do happen to like it, but yeah, it's it's one of the most memorable things of the film. It's uh, equal parts absolutely annoying and totally endearing. I know. It's true. I'd love to know what this voice actually sounded like, because as much as... I love some dubbed things. I would much rather watch it in its own language with subtitles. I actually would rather watch every movie in its own language yeah. with subtitles. I've watched Godzilla movies. I do with love subtitles. some kung fu movies with with dubbing that I quite love. I think that's hilarious. It's fun, fun, but you you end up finding would, it more enjoyable if, yeah, with, if it's with, in its if, own language with the subtitles, you Absolutely. know, as opposed to the ridiculous voices that yeah. always seem to dub films. It's true. It's true. <gasps> this bowl. Okay, so... Uh, instead of me saying it... Instead of me, like, expressing a weakness that we don't know what to watch, uh, we're going to rebrand it as It's Audience Participation Time! That's right! You're and so, uh, us. we got this bowl full of movie titles. Yes, indeed. And you're gonna help us choose. I'm gonna pick three, right? Three? We're gonna pick three, All right. and then we're gonna put a poll up on Twitter. So get a get at us on our Twitter. Yeah. Pick which one you want us to watch. At as as in like that A with a circle around it. At from Madhouse, or just look up movies from Madhouse. We'll probably pop right up. Look at that. Uh, there's this is so many. Th there's, a, there. shit, there's like 250 fucking movie titles right. in there. I have no idea what's going to We did this up. once, and it was the worst thing ever. But that was but. on our Lost Hidden episode. We'll talk about that on another episode. Alright. Mutant. 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 Okay. Street Fighter. Street Fighter. You pick one. Oh, you want me to pick one? Yeah. Spare parts. Spare parts. Okay, we're gonna do a little bit of research. We're gonna see if there's trailers for these, and uh, if there are, we'll show them to you. If not, we'll explain. But we'll be right back. You watch this. We'll be right back. From the depths of the earth, through the shrouded mist, it is coming. The final phase of an accident of nature. Nothing human can have this in its veins and live. It is unexplainable, unbelievable, and uncontrollable. You can't see it in the darkness or hear it in the silence, but you can feel its presence and sense the danger. Ah. Mutant. Don't go out there. Its time has come. Let me, let me. Mutant. Any one of us could be one of them. There is no place left to run. Nowhere left to hide. And there is no escape. We're gonna get out of here, you understand me? We're gonna get out. No! Mankind's deadliest threat would not come from the skies. Mutant. He's a tough man. To let him live is taking a chance. Since he knows our secret, he has to be killed. <laughs> Terry Sigori, six foot six of half-breed fury. 
But he's got a little problem. He has a hard time making friends. You tell that bitch who sent you here. How sorry I am, I can no longer be her friend. The Street Fighter. If you've got to fight, fight dirty. <laughs> Killed Sodoki. Now I owe it to him. I'll show you the meanest guy in the world. You'd better give up. I'm a master, and you're going to lose this game. Yeah. I've waited a long time to settle the score. Don't be too impatient. I'll see you another time. I hate punks worse than anything. And I would love to see the mob destroyed. He has to die. We cannot let him live. Die school member. I owe nothing to any school. You beat a man, they call you tough. You beat an army, they call you the Street Fighter. Introducing the incredible Sonny Chiba. You don't know what mean is until you meet him. Okay, so spare parts didn't work out. No, it spare didn't. parts didn't work out. We're not gonna watch spare Can't parts. Find it. But you can still decide between mutant and the street fighter. The street fighter. I don't what are you rooting for? I'm totally rooting for the street fighter. Introducing Sonny Chiba. Sonny Chiba. That's great and all. Yes. I'm kind of rooting for Mutant. I mean, Mutant looks good, and too. you know why? Because I haven't I love seen Mutant. I some Sunny Chiba. Everybody loves some Sunny Chiba. I know. I I hope so, because he's awesome. But... His milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Right, it should. Right. All right. We've had a wonderful time with y'all. We want to thank the Nightmare for coming out. Yes, uh, thank you, Nightmare. We caught a glimpse of the boy with no name. Yes, we uh, did. We got to do some witchcraft. We got to take a trip to the graveyard, have a picnic. Yes, we got out of that the madhouse. That was mad fantastic. Did you uh, love it? Did you notice that we look a little different? That's because this episode has taken us two fucking weeks to goddamn film. So. In increments, you know. I mean, it does. It, it, Shh, it, you shouldn't tell them that. You know nothing. <laughs> I'm Master Seth. <laughs> this is Mistress Dandelion. Dandelion. And you've been watching movies from the Madhouse. Yes. We'll see you in your nightmares. Ooh, if you're lucky. In your nightmares. And that sounds like we're done, but we're not quite done because I gotta say, we're, 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 that 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 shit we just put up, the the trailers. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put a poll up on yes. Twitter. So vote for which one you want to watch. Yeah, you get to you choose. You can vote for us. You can e or you can vote for it. You can email us at uh, at moviesfromthemadhouse at gmail dot com. That's right. All one word, all lowercase. Um, let us know which one you want to see: Street Fighter or the, Mutant. The Street. The Fighter. Street Fighter, not the one with Jean Claude Van Damme and Gomez Adams. <laughs> from the no. movie, not the show. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, Street that, Fighter. I know, I know that Sonny Raul Chiba. Julia is considered this fantastic classic actor, but I, mean, he's great. I always think of him, because of who I am, as just Gomez Adams that's not John Aston. I know, he's like Gomez Adams. John Aston there. just had a birthday. Yes, happy he birthday, did. John Aston. Uh, I love you as Gomez. Me and Dandelion here are, uh, Gomez and Morticia are spirit animals. Yes. And, you know, that's the way we try. We try and do a very Gomez and Morticia, Lux and Ivy kind of a thing. Yes. Uh, They're the heroes. So anyway, go up there, vote for, uh, the, 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 vote for whether you want to watch Mutant or The Street Fighter. And until then... I'm Master Seth, and this is Mistress Dandelion. And we'll see you in your nightmares. Good night from the Madhouse. <laughs> <laughs>